Hello, listeners and viewers. I want to welcome all of us back to AT Church Online platform. I'm so happy to be back online. I'm so, so happy. I've missed you all. God has missed you. God has been willing to reach out to you through us. Thank you so much for being patient with us. All is well. I must first of all prophetically welcome you to the end of this year, the month of 2019. It has been a very wonderful thing from January up to this moment. God has been faithful to all of us. God has kept us alive by His grace. God has kept us in good health, spiritually and physically. But before I proceed, I want to do a very sincere apology to our viewers and our subscribers and those who have been following us diligently. I know you've been wondering why we've been off air for some time now. We apologize sincerely from AG Church Online. It's not deliberate. The truth is that we had some challenges, some pressing challenges that borders mostly on the equipment with this vision continue to be a reality. We had a camera issue. We had lighting issue, we had challenges. And those challenges, we believe with God's intervention and through human beings like you who are watching us, that will always surmount it. These equipment are man-made and they are bound to have some defect or the other. It's quite unfortunate that it had happened the way it happened. But we thank God we've moved back online. We thank you for being patient with us. We thank you for having benefited and allowed yourself for God to implant his words on you through this particular vision. And as for the challenges we had, I want to make an appeal to our viewers and our listeners out there. I sincerely and sincerely urge you to open yourself to God's ministration and the Spirit of God. Let God touch people who are watching and listening to us to help us keep this vision alive. Whatever our this vision. You can look at that numbers on the screen and contact us. All the information you need is on the screen. You can contact us. Maybe God will touch you to provide a good quality HD camera for us. We'll pray with you and I know God who blesses in secret will bless you and the whole world will know that the hand of God is upon you. If you want to help us with recording instruments that will aid this ministry online, God will richly bless you. God will richly bless you. You are always in our prayers. We pray we are continually for you. We believe that God who kept you alive to this into 20 in greater shape. I don't know what you are looking for. I don't know what you've been praying for God to do for you. But let me assure you, in your mind you are saying it's over. It is never over. A minute, a second is enough for God to turn around your situation and turn your life to a better life. What you're expecting, that expectation, God says He shall not cut short your expectation. So I pray for you this afternoon. As you do what God has commanded you to do, as you continue to follow us and listen to us and share this to many, like I said before, our vision is just to preach the gospel. Nothing more, nothing less. Let us take authority from God before we proceed further. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity once more to share your word, your lovely word, with your, our viewers. We ask that you take absolute charge, take absolute control, and sanctify the ears of all those who are going to listen to this message, the eyes of those who are going to view it, and the hearts of those who are going to accept it. We ask, O oh God, your word that is stronger than any two-edged sword that pierces and rebukes. Let it touch every heart and renew their souls. Lord God Almighty, every sickness, every problem, as they listen to this message, let it be lifted up of their shoulder. Let them be healed of their sicknesses. Thank you, ancient of days, for you are in our midst. Receive all glory and adorations. In Jesus' name of God. Amen. And Amen. I've been longing to share this message with us because it has become a burden. A very big burden to me. And a very big burden that the Spirit of God has laid on my shoulder. And what is this burden? 
saying, common saying, when you go to Rome, you behave like the Romans. I don't know, I've been under a burden to disagree with that saying. Why? What makes us who we are is the content of what we have. What makes us a better person to represent God wherever we are is the God factor in us. It would be a very big shame for any young man, any young woman, any girl, any mother to leave the shores of this country or to leave your environment where you are known as a good Christian brother. And because there are no praying eyes of the people who know you to be around, you now decide to behave like the Romans where you are. Every good child of God remains an ambassador of the kingdom. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter your location. That is why I have a mandate to talk to you about a topic I, talk, I titled My Identity. My Identity. The book of 2 Kings chapter 5 place in the scripture that talks about that great commander of soldier known as Naaman. But Naaman is not my focal point of contact. It's not my focus. My focus is in that little maid that is in the house of Naaman. Let us quickly look at the scripture. The book of 2 Kings chapter 5 that will stop. The Bible said the king of Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. Now groups of Aramean soldiers had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish... I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. Let me pause there a little bit. We know the story of Naaman properly. It's not a new story. Right from when we were a child, we are told this story. story. But there is something God wants to bring out from that story. Who is Naaman? You know who Naaman is, so I won't bother you much about it. But I only want to say, Naaman was a revered man in the country. He was one of the most respected, a great commander, a mighty warrior. He had every time, everything life could offer. He had the ears of the king because the king was always pleased with him. Because through him, the Bible said, the Lord has handed over victories to the Arabians. But despite all this glory, despite all this fame, all this popularity, he had a very terrible sickness. The Bible says he was a leprous man. This is my first time of seeing this man being allowed to lead the legions or the armies of a nation. Imagine in a Federal Executive Council meeting, that leper will sit with the president. He was accommodated irrespective of his sickness. If any other person could suffer in the land of Israel, Lepers are isolated and kept aside from other people. They have a place where they are kept so that they don't infect others. But Naaman, because of his status, was allowed to come. Like I said before, Naaman is not the focal point of my message. I'm only building a background so that you understand. So that you appreciate what message God wants to deliver to us. The Bible said that a new group of Aramean raiders invaded the land of Israel and among the captives was a young girl whose name was unknown. I don't know where you have found yourself. Circumstances of life have taken away your name. <laughs> Situations of life have taken away the identity for which you are known. But let me shock you. It is not the name that you are called that makes you who you are. After all, people answer pressures and they, they are devil incarnate. People answer God will and they don't reflect any godly character in them. People bear good Christian names and it doesn't reflect that. Everything they do is anti that name. So it is not in the name but in the context of character. That is what God wants to talk to us about this evening. It doesn't matter that little place you have found yourself in that little office. It is the light of God in you 
that matter. The Bible says, let your light so shine. Light doesn't need a special location to shine. It can shine forth from everywhere. The Bible says, a light, a little candle on the mountain, can it be hidden? The answer is no. It cannot be hidden. The Bible says, there was a name unknown. The only thing we know is where he is coming from, where she came from. And where was that? She was an Israelite. She was a Jew. She was a special set of person. She was one of the selected persons to become children of God. She had a very good ritual. And she never forgot. Anywhere she went to, even in slavery, she carried her God in her heart. She remained faithful to God. She was willing to preach the goodness of God even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of that slavery where she found herself. She maintained her identity. She did not soil herself. There are a lot of great men of God who has lived up to expectation when trials and I deliberately chose this little unknown obscure girl. Because the Bible says she's a little girl, a maid servant. She, was, she has no life of her own. Let me even shock you. Do you know that in the land, in those olden days, a, the life of a slave is in the hand of the master? The master can decide to kill you and nobody will question. After all, you are like his property. Anything the person does, no one qu He can deal with you, do with you whatever he wants, do with you anyhow he wants it. Okay, okay, never minded. What is our generation now? The guy said, I wish, I wish my master could go. I don't want to belabor you what happened when Neman went. That's a, a message for another day. But for this little girl in her captivity to remember who she is or who she was, to remember that, that he, she had a God that there is an altar in their home, to remember that where she came from, there is a God that answers prayer. To remember that there is a foundation that has been laid that is so sure that can never be broken. To remember that God is with her anywhere she is. The truth of the matter, God has assured us that for lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Christians don't take that assurance seriously. We take it with a pinch of salt. We allow circumstances to dictate how we have faith in God. We allow situation or the placement of life to determine how to follow God's and assurances. But that little girl, as small as she was, maintained her identity. Let me shift you a little bit. Let me take you further. I want to talk to you about what God told Isaiah. The children of Rechabites. We call them the Rechabites. Some people just call them the Rechabites. Something spectacular happened to them. I want to use it and also and portray this message. God does not fail in his promises, and God is ever to uphold any life. Any life, it doesn't matter where, any life that is willing to live up to what God wants. The identity we are talking about is you not following the crowd. You not following what people say, the common language now is trending. What is trending? Do you know a lot of godly people have become social misfits just because they don't fit in into the society? But let me give you one word God wants me to draw for you. The word of God can never change because of societal trend. No matter how man tries to blend this scripture to suit him, it will never suit him. Man is expected to comply with the scripture. And not the scripture complying with man. So no amount of excuses. If I don't do this, they will say I am not fit to follow them. If I don't do this, they will say, ah, ah, come back. Where is your identity? Who are you? Who are you supposed to be?